What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. JP Dividends here bringing you guys another video and today we're going to be taking a look at Intel stock to see if it's a buy, a hold, or a sell. One of you guys recently requested that I look into this company and it looks like over the past month Intel is down 40%. Seems like they had some pretty bad earnings recently so that's why we're going to see should we be buying the dip on Intel stock or not. So in this video we'll go over a few different things starting out with what they do and how they make money. Then we'll take a look at Intel's financials followed up by a dividend analysis. And finally, we'll take a look at their valuation to see what is the intrinsic value of this stock. So what are your thoughts on Intel stock? Comment down below. And if you enjoy the video, drop a like down below and hit the subscribe button for more content like this. Also, feel free to recommend any dividend stocks that you'd like me to analyze. I'd be more than happy to. All right, so starting out with what does Intel do to make money? Now, a lot of people, if you don't already know this, Intel is a massive semiconductor company. They compete with companies like AMD, NVIDIA. Uh, I believe they're trying to focus more on the production of chips and semiconductors. So they're going to be competing more with Taiwan semiconductors going into the future. Um, I believe they also compete with Qualcomm, which is a holding that I own. But yeah, that's basically how they make a lot of their money is they make processors for computer manufacturers. And also Intel's client computing CCG here is their biggest revenue segment producing 59% of their revenue in the previous quarter. So that is essentially how Intel makes money. Now, obviously, AMD and NVIDIA have done really well over the past decade where Intel not so much. Intel is actually down quite a bit over the past 10 years. And so this could be a really good value play. Let's take a look at the financials to see first though. So starting out with their revenue here, as you can see from 2010 to like 2021, very steady trend up and to the right, looking good. And then since basically the beginning of 2022, their revenue has dropped quite a bit and has been downtrending pretty consistently. So I definitely do not like to see that. I mean, it went from 79 billion to now sitting at about 55 billion. Billion, so it's dropped by a pretty large amount. Now, the one very small good thing, I guess, is that you can see they're starting to turn it around down here. It's starting to rebound a tiny bit. I think it looks like the bottom here is 52 billion. Like I just said, they're at 55 billion. But overall, in my opinion, I do not think Intel checks off the revenue box. Now, if this was back at the end of 2021 and I was looking at this chart, then I would say they do. But since then, they have performed very poorly. I mean, if you look at the three-year chart here, that is pretty ugly. So definitely not checking that box off. Let's take a look at the net income though. So Intel's net income is honestly pretty flat for the most part. I mean, don't get me wrong, it starts to kind of trend upward here. It looks like from 2017 to like 2022, it goes up. But for the most part, it's pretty flat. I mean, even if you compare like 2011 here, it's at 12 billion. You go over here to 2022, it's at 13 billion. So really not much growth there. And very similar to the revenue, it's also flipped negative over the past couple of years, which is not good to see. But one of the small bright sides is that it is now flipped back to being positive. So so that is a small, slightly good thing in this data. But even then, like, let's pretend we were looking at this back in, you know, 2021 or 2022. For the most part, the net income is pretty flat. Like, there's no clear trend up and to the right. I mean, as you can see here from, what is this, 2011, 2012, all the way to 2018, sitting pretty much around 12, 13, 14 billion dollars. So the revenue, they're not checking that off. The net income, they're not checking that off. Let's take a look at the free cash flow. So very similar to the previous two stories, although I will admit that before they kind kind of flip negative here. It does look like the free cash flow is very slowly trending upward, you know, 6 billion, and then it's at 10 billion, that's at 12, then 14, and then 21, like very subtle trend upward, which is good. But then again, same thing like what we've seen in the previous two, going down and then flipping negative. And the free cash flow is in fact still negative. And in my opinion, I love revenue, I love net income, but the free cash flow for me is probably the most important thing that I look at. If a company does not have free cash flow to be growing their business, paying out a dividend, share buybacks, acquiring companies, paying down debt, they have a lot less room to function and they typically would have to take on a lot more debt because they're not generating the cash themselves to help grow the business. So overall, they're not checking off any of those categories to start out, but let's take a look at a few more things. So if we take a look at their PE ratio here, it's at 87. Now this is not because Intel is obviously some hyper growth stock. It's just because their earnings have recently flipped positive again, except they are very low. So basically it's price per share divided by earnings per share. If the price per share is somewhat flat, but the earnings per share is really small, it'll make the PE look very large. So PE is pretty high. Let's take a look at a few other metrics. So Intel's net profit margin is 1.77%. Their ROA is 0.16%. The ROE is 0.78. So for a tech company, 1% net margin, this is horrible. I mean, this is, Costco has a better net margin than this and Costco is expected to have bad margins because it's in that kind of, you know, industry. But 
but for a company like this, 1.7%, definitely not cutting it. So that's a big X there. ROA, I normally want above 5%. Obviously, if it's like 15 plus percent, that's great. They aren't even near 5%. I mean, they're almost negative. And the ROE is also very low at 0.78%. So overall, when I look at all of the financials on Intel, they do not check off a single box for me. And one thing I did want to mention is I actually posted a stock analysis video on Intel. I think it was about two years ago. And if you go back and watch that video back then, I was saying that Intel was a hold. It wasn't a buy. It wasn't a sell. But if you look at a lot of these metrics back then, they were a lot better. The mar the profit margin was better. The ROA was better. The ROE was better. Now it's gotten a lot worse since I've made that video. And I even expressed in that video that they did have quite a few cons. And I wasn't really sure if I wanted to wait until 2025 for the company to start taking off again, because that's when the I believe the new chip production factories were supposed to be completed by. So that is an interesting thing. If you go back and feel free to go back and look at that video, you'll see like, oh, dang, they were like, OK, then. But now they're like pretty bad. So the financials aren't looking too good. But let's take a look at the dividend. So if you take a look at this here, Intel no longer pays a dividend. But if you go to the dividend history, you'll see that they used to pay a dividend. And then in 2023, they cut their dividend from 37 cents a quarter to 13 cents a quarter. And in their most recent earnings, this is part of the reason why the stock got sold off so heavily, they announced that they are going to be cutting their dividend entirely. They no longer pay a dividend. So for a company that used to be kind of a slower growing semiconductor company that was pretty well established and had a pretty good moat, they have just gotten obliterated across the board the past few years. I mean, you can even see the dividend growth was looking so promising. Like you go from 2005 to 2022, it's looking so good. It's very steady. It's trending up into the right, looking good. And then boom, they cut their dividend a bunch, going from 37 cents down to 13. Not only do they cut their dividend in half, but then less than two years later, they announced that, yep, we're just getting rid of the dividend as a whole. We cannot afford to pay this out anymore. So talk about a nightmare scenario for a dividend stock. So as you guys can tell, I have nothing against Intel. It's not like I want to dislike this company. It's just that they do not treat their investors well. They're not growing the business very well. But, but, but let's take a look at the intrinsic value. Maybe just maybe we could be buying the dip on a really undervalued business. And unfortunately, that is not the case from what I'm seeing right here. So my DCF model puts them at $11 a share. Simply Wall Street puts them at $3 a share. They're currently trading at, I believe it's like $20.8 a share. So they are completely overvalued based on these two things. If you were to average it out, you'd get seven bucks a share. So they have a 65% downside. And this is after they've already gotten sold off by 40% in the past month. And one thing I did want to mention is my DCF model is very bullish on their free cash flow. So for example, my DCF model assumes that they go from negative 14.2 billion in 2023 to $0. So it goes from negative 14 billion to zero. And then in 2025, it jumps up to 6 billion. And even then, with me assuming that they are going to turn their free cash flow around, it's still overvalued. And so like I just said a second ago, it's not that I want to dislike Intel stock. It's just that like when you look at this company, I don't understand where the bullish outlook is long term. I mean, maybe they could turn it around. Like I understand them cutting the dividend to try to keep the business afloat and keep it doing well. And I know that long term, if they got into more of the production side of semi conductors and competed with Taiwan semiconductors, then maybe they could do well long term. But my overall take on Intel stock is that this is definitely not a buy right now. In fact, I would even go as far as to say that it's a sell. I think if you own this company and you are holding it long term, you are going to do nothing but lose money. I think they have proven that time and time again the past couple of years. They might be able to turn it around, but is the juice worth the squeeze type of thing? That's the way I view that. I actually used to own Intel for a while. And what I saw was, okay, this was a slow growing business that had a deep decent dividend. And then it went from being a slow growing business to being a flat business where revenue went from growing, you know, three, four, five percent year over year to barely growing at all, basically being flat to then flipping negative. Oh, now revenue shrinking. The business is no longer growing. So overall, this makes sense why the stock is getting so sold off. I mean, the company has just treated its investors like complete shit, in my opinion. I mean, the financials are pretty horrible for this business. They cut their dividend last year and a lot of long term investors may be sitting there thinking, oh, well, like I'd much rather prefer they cut their dividend in half than to, you know, get rid of it. And guess what? Less than two years later, they got rid of it entirely. So it's no longer even a dividend stock. You're not even getting income as the stock selling off. You're just getting killed. So apologies if I sounded kind of intense there with Intel stock again for the third time. It's not like I want to dislike this company. They just want you. They literally just make it so hard to like them. I don't understand anybody that's holding. I feel like you could just sell Intel stock and buy an ETF and feel so much stress gone. Like if you put a thousand dollars in and you lost some money on 
on it, you know, sell it, take the tax loss, harvest that, you're good. Um, but yeah, that's just my take. I do not think Intel is a buy right now. I would stay away from this company until they turn it around, which hopefully they do, but I would rather just not even bother dealing with them in the meantime. But that's just my opinion. What are your guys' thoughts on Intel stock? Comment down below. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like down below, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.